We're here, downtown Rochester, at this building, the Five Star Bank Plaza. It used to be the HSBC building, something like that. And October 1st, 2009, this right here was my very first day at the CPA firm. You've heard me talk about it. You've heard the joys and experiences that I've had. Now, it's not uncommon for somebody to not love their job, but as we've talked about before, the job before the job, it's okay that we don't love our job. It's okay if you're frustrated, but how is it that you use this experience to get to the next level? I walked in on day one and somehow I thought, this place is not for me. I hate my job. So here's five ways to take your job, your current role, find out how to get better work, your best work, your best experience, out of what it is that you're currently doing today and how it will prepare you for tomorrow. All right, point number one is this. I stayed for two years. I hated my job on day one, but I stayed for two, well, maybe not two years, but I stayed close to two years. And sometimes, especially Josh, I'm having trouble with my millennial staff or what's going on with millennials in the workplace. They come, the job's not exciting and they leave. And I agree that there's this balance between finding what you love and being passionate and thinking that every day should be utterly amazing. But there's also this balance of how are you gonna stay? How are you gonna stick it out? Because the truth is this, if you're doing something meaningful, if you're going to advance to another level, you're gonna have to face challenges and obstacles. And so why not let day one, job one, or the current role you're in help you define how to overcome those obstacles. Point number two of what I learned about being at the CPA firm was to find parts of your job that you loved. There was a certain client where we were doing a labor audit and when I was getting to work with people one-on-one -on -one and ask them questions about their job and their role, all of a sudden it was more exciting and more engaging. So even though most of the work I absolutely hated, I was able to find this part of it. The other thing is this, there was a time, there was a few of us at a client, they wanted an impromptu discussion, an impromptu presentation. And we're all kind of looking at each other and they're like, uh, uh, all right, well you do it. And I was like, okay. And it seemed to be comfortable for me. And all of a sudden getting up in front of a room of people and getting to present information, I was like, this is, this is amazing. And the other thing is, anytime we'd be out at a client, I'd find any excuse to walk into somebody's office that, that I had to talk to and look at their desk and look at their pictures, finding what was important to them and then getting to, to build a conversation and develop that relationship. Because to me, I'm like, anybody can do the work that we're doing, but if we have a true relationship, if they like us, they're gonna wanna keep us and retain us. And so in the midst of hating my job, I was able to find these pieces of the work that I was doing to help influence me and give me a positive outlook on the job, the role, and who I was becoming. Point number three is this. It's cold out. Well, that's sub point B, it's cold. So point three is this, is I committed to me. There was a time I was having a conversation with um, one of my direct supervisors and he's like, Josh, comfortable is good. And when you're struggling, you look to advice for other people that you work with. And I remember when he said, Josh, comfortable is good, that inside of me, alarm bells were going off. Like it was like <coughs> red alert. I'm like, no, comfortable. I don't think comfortable is good. So I had to commit to me. When we're going through this journey of the job before the job or developing our career, we have to commit to what we feel is best for us. And when we get advice, and it's important to get advice, but we have to, we have to know that if it does, doesn't seem right, that we gotta listen to that. The other thing is, people would say, Josh, this career must be for you. You picked this, <laughs> this uh, major in college. How could you think about leaving? How could you think about not doing this work? And I thought, 
just because I spent five years to get a four-year college degree, like, doesn't mean that I need to spend the next 60 saying that decision was okay. So, people are gonna have their input. Most times, people view your life through their filter. Now, don't forget point number one, which is to stick it out. Just because you're feeling, oh, this hard work, or I'm not loving this, you gotta stick it out. You never know who you can become, what will develop through that time in that role. The other part about being for you is that you gotta seek feedback. When you're committed to you, you're not trying to protect this, this role. You're realizing that this situation is a little bit tough, a little bit difficult. So you go and you seek feedback. There's times that I would go and seek feedback from a manager on a job and say, hey, maybe this job didn't go as well as I would have wanted. Because just this job, this role, once again, the whole framework of the job before the job, an athlete has practice, an athlete has game time. And we have to think about every day, every week as another game week for us to be able to get more feedback. And so you have to say, how do I get the insight into who I am? And when we can commit to us, I had to find a way to commit to me and realize that even though my ego would not want me to, to know that this place was not, that I was not excelling or that I was not killing it, I still had to say, I have got a career in front of me and I need to get insight now. I mean, in this situation, I was a rookie. For you, you may be 12 years in, 20 years in still pushing forward and developing or having these frustrations about your career. And I don't think that, that it matters where you are in the journey if every day or every week is that opportunity to get the game film. I mean, Philip Rivers, uh, quarterback in the NFL for what, 15 years, something like that? He converted, he spent 200 grand to convert an SUV into a mobile film room. So that way when he's between his house and practice, he can watch film and get better with the time that he has. A professional athlete who's been one of the best for 15 years watches game film all the time. If he is constantly getting better, how do we constantly get better? And that's when we commit to us, regardless of the job, regardless of the circumstance. And point number four is this, don't be a I mean, really, don't be a if you hate your job or you feel like your job sucks, you don't have to tell everybody. You don't have to even think that in your head because the moment that you start feeling that way and you start acting that way about this particular job is the time that all of a sudden who you are, the impact that you have, the, the ability to learn from this unique circumstance begets, becomes reduced. It was clear to me on day one, walking into here, there was something about it, something about the idea of, of being here. I mean, I literally walked in on day one saying, I'm gonna be a partner in 10 years, whatever it takes. That was in my heart, that was my desire. And somehow throughout that first day, I knew that this was not it. This was not gonna be my jam. And over the next, I mean, over the next year, the, those feelings intensified, but I definitely wasn't a little about it. I worked my off. I tried so hard. I put in the hours. I stayed late. I tried to come in early, tried to do whatever it takes to succeed. And I think so many times people get into situations that they don't love and they just want to flake out. They want to blame everybody else. Do I feel like I had the most dynamic managers? No. But I took that responsibility on and said, I'm here today. I'm getting paid to be here. Who can I become through the process. Now, my ability to spend hours staring at spreadsheets and thinking about things that weren't the way my brain worked, it was hard, it drained me, it was stressful. But that time, because I said, I'm here, not being a little about it, I stepped in. It's so, it's so hard, it's so key. As we talk about with the tingly feeling, oftentimes it's only 4% of our work. So that 96% and 20, 30% of the work that can just absolutely kill us, it sucks, it's the worst type of work for us. But when we can focus on who we are becoming through that and commit ourselves to the process, who we become on the back end, the job before the job, we cannot know what the training we are doing today, what it is preparing us for 
for the next step. And point number five of how you really work with the job before the job or the job that you hate or how do I get better, however you wanna apply this, is this. Read, ask, read, ask, read, ask. During my almost two years at the firm, I read about 100 leadership and self-development books. Now you don't have to read 100, but I fell in love with this. I saw ideas and thoughts and, I mean, when I saw something about like strengths, I thought, oh my gosh, that would explain maybe why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. I, had I not began the process of reading and asking questions, now part of asking questions was reaching out to people who are established or people who seem to be happy with their job or what I viewed as successful. And I think so many times somebody with a greater perspective, a bigger perspective than us can offer insights that can truly inspire us, allow us to get more See, it's, it breaks my heart that people don't love their work, don't love their job. But I understand that we all have families or responsibilities that we need to support and that that money of that job is critical. And so, almost killed a guy, almost killed a dude. Sponsored by Bud Light. And, and I understand and I so appreciate that 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 job has to just happen. And I, I always want to have that sensitivity to that. And well, guess what I'm trying to say is that time is, is valuable. Time is so valuable. And so why would we waste a day, a week, a month of doing something that we don't love or that we're getting so frustrated by? Why would we do that? Unless it's serving a greater purpose. That greater purpose is the job before the job. Who am I becoming before I'm stepping into the role or the job that I demand, that I desire, that I've worked for. <laughs> job before the job. That was the job after the job, building those frontier vans. That job was cool because I got to treat people a certain way. How I treated people depended on whether or not they used their drill stops, how quickly they assembled that ladder rack. I mean, that's freaking sweet. That's kind of funny and ironic. Um, forget where I was going. Yeah, read and ask. I mean, you can read a book. You can read a book and somebody who's studied or put their whole life into this book and we can get an insight from that that can make our life better. We can find a mentor. We can find somebody to ask questions to. I remember when I was at the firm, there was actually a partner. He was a partner at the firm and he chose to leave to pursue something else because he was feeling a lack of meaning, a lack of satisfaction. I was able to connect with that, with him. And I was able to ask him questions because I was able to get a good insight into, I think so many times when you don't love what you're doing or you're not getting that fulfillment, at least for me, my gut reaction was the problem was me. And that's why I tried harder. That's why I worked harder. But when I was able to talk with this, with this gentleman, it was able to give me the perspective, the perspective that I maybe would have never gotten any other way. So read and ask and read and ask. All right, vlog. So that's it for today. We uh, got some coffees, froze. I wouldn't say we broke in. We just walked in with confidence. Security guard, he didn't say anything. I didn't think it'd be open today, to be honest, but it was. You can't come with me, but I'm also going to a, well, I guess you could come with me. I could take a photo, I might. I'll probably, I don't know if I will, but I'm going to my favorite little sub shop here called Emile's. Whew, it is a treat. The bread, the onions are so thin. The lettuce is like this shredded. I mean, the meat, you it seems like there's no meat on this sandwich, but the oil that the, I don't know. It it takes me back to when I was a kid. One of my favorite, sand, probably my ultimate favorite sandwich of all time. And I'm about to get that today. So, hey, thanks for coming along. Thanks for listening. You know that uh, I could talk about it now, but that was 2009. That was almost 10 years ago. And in that season of my life, it was, 
It was hard. I mean, when you hate your job so much that on Saturday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, you get this pit in your stomach that you've got to go back on Monday. I stuck it out for almost two years. And the, the conviction, the lessons, that's what inspired me to say work should be important. Work should be meaningful. The best work that we can produce comes when we are in alignment with who we are, what we do best, and what is possible. I mean, come on. Saturday afternoon, you hate your job so much that it, it just, you get this pit in your stomach. Mm, mm, mm. That's the mission that I'm on to, to prevent that. And for helping people get breakthrough because when you get breakthrough, when you win it, it's, as a human, almost nothing feels better when you get to win with others in a positive way. And when we can express the truest version of, of our work, of what is most meaningful to us, how we raise our kids, how we influence our peers. I mean, that's what we talk about, May Rocky. That happens through the tingly feeling. And when we think with unlimited capacity and we don't think in terms of potential, like, those are the things right there that begin to make the difference and they add up to who we are for a better work, for more breakthrough, for a better culture, for better leadership. I could go on and on. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you.